Does this feel good? Is this loud enough? Am I yeah, close you can enough? even get closer. Yeah? Okay. Um, so tell me what you have for breakfast. Wait, this is maybe bad, but I am not like a breakfast girl. Get the I, 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 I hate out. this stuff. I I got recently a um like a very standard coffee pot, like regular old school. Like and, with a filter? Yeah. This is the is, is sign language for, for filter. filter. Yeah, 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 of course. And something about it, I'm like, I feel like I'm in Seinfeld. I feel like. <laughs> she said, what? How could they do something like that? Are you serious? What a thirsty mf -er. Not good. She's absolutely dead to me. That's because she died. I'm Sterling Mulberry. And I'm Blair Payton. And welcome to Bad, Bad Behavior. Behavior. A morally questionable podcast. Where two unqualified friends. Two unhinged comedians. Determine once and for all what is good. And what is bad. Blair! How are you? I am just so wonderful. It's so great to be in your presence again. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What do you think my presence is giving today? It is giving strong, confident woman. Wow. I think it's the turtleneck. Mm, yeah. yeah, that can be that. Okay, what is my presence giving? Um, It's giving college. It's giving loungewear. Yeah. It's giving relaxation. I am relaxed. I am currently wearing the hoodie from my old college, Virginia Western Community College. Shout out. Shout out. Famous alumni, Blair Payton. Famous alumni. And actually, the program I took was radio and TV production, which they have since dissolved the program. <laughs> so, Well, you dang, you could have come back and been a speaker. I just crushed the hell out of it taking that course that literally the year after they dissolved the program. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They were like... We did it. We taught. The only student we're actually interested in teaching. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Wow. I do remember I had a teacher there and he was, he was mean, but he was probably just trying to push us. But I remember the first day of college. So I famously had a cable access show in my hometown. Literally dozens of people watched it. And so I remember on the first day of school, I thought he'd be impressed because, it, you know, it was a production course. And I was like, uh, excuse me, Mr. Fenton, I just wanted to let you know I have a cable access show and I, I write and produce it. I produce it on the computer. I was very proud of myself. And whole time, not even talking, acknowledging me. And I followed him as he walked to his office and he shut the door <laughs> in my face. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Stuck with me. Oh, my gosh. That just reminded me of... I took a sketch comedy class in college, and it was honestly a very, very fun class, but I was pretty nervous, like, the whole semester. The teacher, like, I was bombing pretty much the whole semester. Like, I think I got really nervous about what I was bringing in, and so I kind of, like, half-assed it a little bit, okay. and um, I would say nine weeks in, which is, like, you're near in the end of the semester, I did a sketch and performed it, and it okay. got a lot of laughs. And the teacher looked at me and was like, oh, why did you decide to be so unfunny this whole semester up until now? Woof. I know. He said something like that, and I was like, okay, I'll go throw myself off a cliff. As I'm basically in my head, this is my last semester of college, being like, maybe I'm interested in comedy. For my teacher to be like, you haven't made me laugh. Literally once. Well, first of all, comedy is subjective. It is. And I wasn't, I, I'll be honest, my sketches weren't good. Well, what was the sketch where you just really crushed it? Well, you'll never believe this. Written by someone else. Oh. <laughs> and that boy now is a star. He's actually a famous actor. Who? <laughs> well, he's not that famous. If you're listening, you know who you are. But he has a famous parent or parents. Wait, do I know this person? No, I don't think so. Unless you've watched some shows he's in, but you wouldn't know his name. Well, what was the sketch he wrote? Like, what were you doing in the sketch? I was doing, let's be honest, it was like an off-brand gilly. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was like this really weird girl, and I was just like popping up in the trunk of a car being crazy. Well, let me ask you this. When he, your teacher said that to you, what did you say in response? I think, I, I don't even think I really responded. Like, I just was like, Oh, thanks. All right. If you I had the know. chance, pretend I'm the teacher. What would you say? Let's go back in time. I would, let's, say, I would say this. Well, hold on. Let me let me prompt you. Let's okay. let's let's do a okay. little role play. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Wow, uh, Sterling. Um, <laughs> that was actually very funny. Why did you choose now to finally be funny after all these weeks of shucking? <laughs> well, 
I'll be honest. I wish you had created an environment in this class that didn't feel so scary and therefore... You're stupid. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. How'd that feel? That was that felt really good. I, that felt cathartic. I will be honest. I actually did really like him. I was a professor and I really liked the class, but I think it just didn't feel super safe to like be crazy, I think. And I was yeah. a little too in my head. And then him being like constantly being like, you're not funny. You're not funny. You'll never believe actually put me more in my head. Shocking. But he was pushing you. He wanted you to be your best self. And, and look what, at you and now. what is so embarrassing is I moved to New York City and within one year I was on SNL. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And so I, I called him and I said, look at me now. Yeah. You actually took over the role of Gilly. I did. That I was the did. only role you did on SNL. The only one. And uh, everyone's going to say, I don't remember you. And I was like, well, actually, I did such a good impression of Kristen Wiig. People couldn't even see the difference. It was crazy. Well, you know what? Yes, he pushed you. But at the end of the day, I'm going to say it's bad behavior. Thank you. Yeah. But speaking of judgment, I'm kind of I'm itching to okay. judge right now. Okay, itching you said. <laughs> okay, I absolutely actually hate I said that. I'm actually really in the mood. You know what? My hands are moist with excitement. Yeah. So I think we should maybe bring in our guest. What do you think? I just wanted to say something equally as weird as the yeah. itching. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Moist hands. She is one of our absolutely dear friends. She does shows all over New York. Please welcome Sarah Ross. Oh, hello. Oh my God, Hi. it's so good to see you. Hi. Oh my God. Thanks for having me. I want to know, how do you approach bad behavior? So let me let me start here. Okay. Yes, I am a rule follower. Oh, gorgeous. I have always been someone who like, and I think it's probably pathological. I'm like, tell me exactly what you want me to do to make you happy and I'll fucking do it. <laughs> like, like I, if, if there's a, a rule book, I'm there. I'm happy yeah, to yeah. do it. I would have thought you would have been like, no, middle fingers in the air. You give off badass energy. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, but so there's there's uh there's some like balance there, I guess, because I also can't hold other people to that. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Um, so I feel like bad behavior, not a ton of bad behavior coming from me, maybe, but I don't know. Like I've just always been such a goody two shoes like role follower kind of. Even I'm like my wild streak. I'm like I guess I went to alcohol parties in high school. That was crazy. <laughs> Whoa, that alcohol was crazy. parties. <laughs> Do you find, like, say you're, like, in a group, mm -hmm. you're doing group with your friends, and that just means hanging out? Of course. And, like, Not in the gay world. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a friend is, like, being a little mean to another friend in the group. Would you, like, stick up and say something? Or if you're, like, mm, it's not really happening to me. I'll say this. I'm so non-confrontational. If somebody's being mean to me, I'm, like, not going to say anything in the moment. I'm just going to sob about it later and then <laughs> talk to all of my friends and yep. be, like, that was wrong, right? Like, yep. get validation. Um, I guess in the moment, like if I'm seeing somebody be mean to someone else, I feel like I want to say that I would stick up for them. <laughs> no, but be honest, be or, honest. Or I would probably, here's what I'd probably do. In the moment, I would either probably like make it, try to make a joke if it was like, oh, that was a really cutting thing to say and I like yeah. want to like lighten the mood. Um, but I would never like call it out in real time. Um, I would probably, I would love, I would absolutely be going over it with my therapist. Yeah. And, um, but I would like, I'd really hope that I had the like courage or something to Pull the person aside afterwards, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm. talk through it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm such a little Obviously, baby. Like every, I'm a baby about that every stuff. Every situation's different. Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ, and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologists recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products. And now through December 3rd, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through December 3rd, only at BJ's. Ah, feel the woe with Listerine at BJ's. You can save $2.50 now on Listerine products like Total Care Anti-Cavity Fluoride Fresh Mint Mouthwash or Cool Mint Pocket Packs Fresh Breath Strips at your nearest BJ's location. Experience the feeling of a million germs zapped in seconds with Listerine. Discount available through December 24th. Save now only at BJ's. To a little game. Oh, do you like games? I love games. Okay, Great. amazing. Okay, so we have a little game on this pod that we love to do. It's called Heaven or Hell. And we know you famously are a girl from Texas. So true. <laughs> um, and so 
This is a game where on a scale from one being hell to 10 being heaven, Mm -hmm. you rank behavior. And these behaviors have a Texas theme. Okay. All right, Blair, do you want to kick us off? Yes, I would would be glad to. Someone saying their favorite artwork is George Bush's celebrity portraits. That's going to be pretty low (laughs) on the scale. That is getting pretty close to hell because ultimately what the portraits represent, (laughs) I guess. Sterling mentioned this. Is is it a building and it's just... What is it exactly? No, it's no. it's like so much like darker than that. It's basically that after everything with and I'm not going to pretend like I know enough about politics to be like the nuances of war and like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically just like after all of it, like he's so I guess like riddled with like grief and sorrow and like regret and da da da. So he's like doing like oil paintings of every person that died in the is this what? right? Is this right? I don't know. I think I guess it's, <laughs> Hold I just, on. I just, let's fact check it, but it's really I'm going to fact it check this. It's <laughs> George W. Bush's new portraits of 43 immigrants include famous faces and everyday heroes. Wait. <laughs> Wait. So we so may it, not know what this so is. Is mine okay. dead wrong? Who is that? Like, I don't I'll be honest, I don't I don't know who that it's man is. It's a picture of retired Dallas Mavs star Dirk No Witsy. Do you know him? Do you know him personally? Um, How far is Dallas from Houston? Like a four hour drive, probably. Oh, and, this is pretty and, close. And you know, Dallas and Houston are rivals. Duh. They're rivals. Do so, not get so me I'm started. Like, the Mavs, I don't know. Wait, I'm humiliated that I. <laughs> we'll Google later. I really do think you're, some, some part of that is correct. Am I Googling incorrectly? What no, I, I think, I mean, he's done a lot of painting. He's uh, had a lot of time off. Post 9 11 veterans react to portraits painted by president. Okay, veterans. Okay. So I think we're kind of... You're right. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go with, I'm completely right, yeah. nobody fact check this, and... Yeah, it's fine. So you went with one on that one. Like, I'm going to go one, probably. Go one. Okay, fair is enough. Is that bad? I don't know, whatever. You got to stick to your gun. You're yeah, saying, why not be extremist ultimately, sometimes? this is a game. This is a game. This is a game, true. Yeah, it's a game, so have you're fun. fine. You guys yeah. have fun for literally <laughs> once. Okay, number two. On a scale of one to ten. Someone not knowing who Reba McIntyre is. Oh, that's bad. That's not good. I feel like Reba is so huge. Did you guys watch that absolutely. show? Uh, absolutely. She's a, con- she's a country legend. Yeah. and Is she originally from Texas? I think I'm not entirely sure. Oh, Really? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. You knew so much about the portraits. I thought you would know so much about <laughs> Reba McIntyre. <laughs> I don't know that she's – she's certainly not from Houston. I would know if she were. Okay. But I would say – I don't know. This might be like a three. Like I'm not angry that people don't, but – it's but like you good. should. But wake up. But wake yeah. up. You know, yeah. get real. Yeah. I mean, do you know the theme song? A single mom who works two jobs who loves her kids and never stops. A gentle hands in the heart of a fighter. I'm a survivor. <laughs> okay, Destiny's Child. Yeah, yeah. That was really good. Okay. Uh, this um, one I'm really interested in your take. Okay. A man working at the Space Center Houston telling you he is interested in Mars colonization. Do you know boys that are like really interested in Mars colonization and are constantly trying to talk to you about it? Does this hit home? No, but I feel like, (laughs) but I feel like, but here's what I want to say. I feel like I support NASA more than I support like the Elon Bezos space exploration. Yeah, Yeah. To me, that's not heaven but it's not my hell. It's not your hell. I mean, that's like a Like vibe. if it kind of a man is like, okay, like the planet's not going to last forever and I really think we need to be putting more resources into colonizing Mars because we got to get off this planet. And anytime it's something like that, it's like the way a man speaks to me about it can change everything. Oh, okay. Because if this is someone who's just like, you know, thinks thinks they're like ahead of the curve and like they know what they're doing and they're like, I said, and again, that's my thing. If it's just like some Elon fanboy who's like, I trust him, I follow him blindly, and yeah. like you know, so I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit neutral there. Okay, you're I on have five. no, I have no interest in going to space myself. Oh, literally not. There is part of me too that's like, we can't think of anything else to spend the money on. I know. <laughs> you that's know what, what I mean. Thing. I'm like, we can fix a couple things here. I think. I'm like, oh yeah, cut to Flint, cut to Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what if we had water here? Yeah. What? If, yeah. Water instead here. of spending so much money trying to figure out if it could maybe possibly even exist a little bit on Mars, they're like, babe, here we don't have it. So, all right, my score just went down a little. Okay, I think. Good. Okay. okay. Great. okay. So, what's the final score on that? Three. Okay, three. This next one. Since Dr Pepper was invented in Texas. What's your view on someone only offering a Dr. Pepper at a party? Not even water. No spirits. Nothing. 
I mean, that's a, that's not a good party. <laughs> that's not a good party. You can't invite someone over and then say, by the way, didn't tell you this. This is a Dr. Pepper <laughs> themed party. I'm like, these are all, you, you're you giving me all bad ones. These have all been sub five. Do you know what I mean? I see, see, I think that There's would be no a heaven. heaven. That's, That's heaven that, to that you? Would be Blair's heaven. I love Dr. Pepper. He loves Dr. Pepper. Have you ever had hot Dr. Pepper? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, like you warm it up, like it's a oh, cider, yeah. like it's a winter. Oh, so yeah. what you do is you pour it into a saucepan and just bring it to a simmer, okay? okay? And then you cut a thin slice of lemon and put it in your mug. Okay. okay. And then you, you take the saucepan and then you just slowly pour it over the lemon. Okay. okay? So it like marries the two flavors. Pie. I know. All of a sudden. <laughs> and it tastes like hot sweet tea. Like, okay. It is. That's something I would try. So I'm like, gosh, I don't know, five. I'm a little neutral on it. I'm like, That's it's fine. not a good idea, but I would drink a Dr. Pepper. You're, I feel like we're being offensive. I, I will be honest. I went to my friend who lived in Austin for two years, and I was like, tell me some Texas things. So I feel like I'm being offensive, but I'm like, you're hosting a pig roast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. She, <laughs> she texted me pig roast, and I said, all right. Pig roast? That's pig roast. so funny. Okay, okay sorry. I'm not even done. Okay. okay, you're hosting a pig roast. And a vegan shows up. End of sentence. Get the hell out. <laughs> Grow up. Get real. Smoke a cigarette. If you're a vegan in Texas, that's beautiful, but you have to know that this is this is a challenge you're going to face. Yeah. This is a challenge you're going to face. So maybe what this actually is to me is heaven, 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 because this is an opportunity to look at them and say, sorry. So that's a 10 for you. You actually are dying to have a vegan I'm show. A, I'm, ha- I'm dying up. to have a vegan show. And you know what? Here's the thing. I'm like, I respect you as a vegan. So you have to respect that if you accept an invitation to a pig roast, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's kind of... The, that's the nature of this event. It's the nature of the event. I love that. All right. Okay. And the last one. Blair. Last one. Okay. Here we go. You're on a date and your lover reveals that their full time job <laughs> is a cowboy. <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, 10. That is sexy as hell. I obviously grew up going to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And there's something to me about a cowboy where I'm like, I already know you could like probably mount a TV or something. <laughs> Like, you know that they're, like, handy and, like, like they, I like that, I think. Okay. So, wait, if your full-time position is a cowboy, yeah, what is what is what does your day look like? And that is actually a fair point because I assumed immediately off the bat that they were competition <laughs> rodeo. <laughs> like, like, that is so true. I mean, there's a few different things. You could be, like, a cattle rancher. Okay. And then I think that would still be a cowboy. Is that still hot? That's still hot, okay. yeah. That's That sounds like a lot of land. Hot. You know what I mean? I'm picturing property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, economy. That's what I'm picturing. Like, let's say you're going on a blind date, and uh-huh. the guy shows up, and he's dressed, you know, in he's his- He's dressed in cowboy. He's, he's dressed he, in cowboy, pearl, like a Wrangler pearl snap yeah. shirt. And he comes in, and he uh, taps his hat, you know, does this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Like, if the mm-hmm. hat's too low, he mm-hmm. dips it up, and he's like, hey there, lady. You look real pretty. Would that like just like instantly <laughs> would, work. Okay. would work in a big way? Man. Man. I don't How know, like fifty two. Oh, oh, wow. oh, that's a little okay. old. Like, okay, so he moisturizes. Uh, okay, it's a little old. Yeah, no. At least give me like a sexy cowboy. <laughs> yeah, give her at least. Okay, it has to there be a is sexy some cowboy. older sexy cowboys that are fifty. Okay, okay, okay and no. I would love. to... To experience that when I'm 50. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, he's we're 21. Very, we're very young. <laughs> he's he's new to the job. He's fresh out of college. Blair's like he's either 52 or he's in high school. Yeah. And you're like, no, my it's only one age. And he just started growing a beard, so it's a little uneven. And he's like, no, 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 no. We're, we're sticking, we're sticking with no. 10. Okay. This is, yeah. I, this regular, is age. regular age. Regular age, sexy. sexy. The thing that's, because I feel like the way this is presented was like, you know those challenges that are like, he's a 10, but. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, 10 butt is a cowboy. <laughs> and I'm like, so an 11. 11 yeah. So an 11 is what I'm hearing. Ah, feel the whoa with Listerine at BJ's. You can save $2.50 now on Listerine products like Total Care Anti-Cavity Fluoride Fresh Mint Mouthwash or Cool Mint Pocket Packs Fresh Breath Strips at your nearest BJ's location. Experience the feeling of a million germs zapped in seconds with Listerine. Discount available through December 24th. Save now only at BJ's. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. 
Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. We've locked in low prices to help you save big store-wide. Look for the locked in low prices tags and enjoy extra savings throughout the store. Kroger, fresh for everyone. So, Sarah Ross, we'd love to dig in yeah. with whatever story you might have brought to us today. Yeah. You can get our kind of hot take opinion wrong or right okay. whenever you're ready. Yeah, we want to help you through this. Um, okay, so I hope this doesn't break the format too much because this is – it is a story. It is a stance. But like I have made it official. I'm no longer hosting anybody at my apartment. You cannot stay with me. You cannot. Okay. You If you're coming into town, that's beautiful. I'll meet you <laughs> out. I'll meet you out for a dinner or something. I had my sister come stay with me somewhat recently. Okay. And even my blood relative, I was like, this is too small of a space for more than one of us to be here. Your stuff is like getting in the way. The first place I lived in in New York, I swear my bedroom, my I had a full-size bed. It touched three of the four walls. Classic. It's classic. There was no closet. I just had yep. like a wardrobe, like yeah. as if it were like student housing, your yep. freshman year dorm. And you're in a studio right now, right? And yeah, so this okay. is this is a separate this is like my okay. first place I lived. But I just remembered it was like in in that space even. So this is like something that's been brewing in my head. I've really just been like allowing people to stay and building resentment, which is like also not a good way to do it. But LA or New York, uh -huh. and especially somebody from Texas, it's like I recognize that these are aspirational cities and that these are cities you go on vacation to. It makes a lot of sense why somebody wants to come visit me here. But the approach people have to like – what their time looks like and what they're spending their money on and stuff like once they get up here what are they spending their time and money on okay so my sister comes into town drag her e <laughs> immediately immediately it's like not one thing it's two she's like i'm flying in wednesday she's like i don't think i'm gonna stay until tuesday and yes. i'm like okay so a full week essentially <laughs> a full calendar week is yeah. is what i'm hearing she, so she gets in it's like a truly a wednesday and by the time i'm off work Immediately, we're meeting people out for a drink. We're getting dinner. We had tickets to the show that was off Broadway, Titanic. Honestly, it was so good. Everybody go see it. And then afterwards, she's like, well, let's go get dessert and a glass of champagne. And so we do. And I'm like, it's Wednesday. I have to be up and at them tomorrow. And what is your day as far as work? Like, how long are your days? So, I mean, it's like a 10-hour day. It's like 8 oh, to 6. That's really long. Like an 8 to 6. And you're on your feet a lot, Kind right? of situation. Yeah. Um, I am, and I'm... Uh, no, not really. I don't know. At this job, it's like I work at a doctor's office, so okay. it's not it's not like bedside nursing, like yeah. running around, like you know, dying patients. It's like being seen in an office. So, but still, the thing is that it always what ends up happening is that they come in talking some shit about like, I just want to live like a local, and I'm like, okay, so what you're saying to me is that you have no plans. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like me to curate a weekend for you. You want me to set up all the reservations. And to share the space. I think if you're in a studio, it's hard to share a space for more than two or three days. A full week is too much. I want alone time. As a local, what does your day actually look like when you come home from work? Okay, so I feel like this is the other thing about New York. A lot of times it's like you leave for the day and then you're not home until you're home. Like whenever I was living in Texas, if you have a car, it's like you would leave, go to work, come back. Typically, if I leave for work in the morning, then... I, I'm not coming home right after. I'm, like, going out and doing sets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? I do. I feel like I'm out doing comedy, like, probably four nights a week. And then I'm, like, I'm also single. I'm, like, trying to go on these first dates. I'm, like, you have friends to see. You have people to catch up with. And then if I, like, I work from home twice a week. So, like, I try to, like, get up in the morning and, like, go work out before work. And, like, then you're, like, trying to be quiet and, like, get get everything together while somebody yeah. else is like sleeping in and mm -hmm. there is something so distinctly hard about like leaving your own apartment with somebody asleep in your bed and being like <laughs> now do you when they come in and even if they say um you know I, yeah i'll be fine i'll do my own thing we'll meet up later do you still feel some sort of responsibility way of yeah you absolutely do to keep yeah. them entertained and they love to use that line they're like you don't have to entertain me and i'm like yeah i do <laughs> that's literally exactly what i signed up for and <laughs> 
And it's not something where you're being, um, and I hate to use the term dragged to, but like seeing the same sights over yeah, and over yeah. and like having to, um, this is another big thing with people who come to visit. Like you'll be out doing something and it'll be like all of a sudden an emergency for them. Like they cannot walk another step. Yeah. <laughs> and they like, and they're like always in the wrong shoes. And they're like, yeah, always how do you do it? Yeah. And Are you like, a fast walker too? I mean, yeah, I've become one. Okay. Yeah. I've become yeah. one. If any of us were doing something and we're walking on the sidewalk, we know the culture of like bob and weave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob mm-hmm. and weave. If you're yeah. behind two people that are walking slow, you bob and weave, you get around them. Like, And it's an unspoken you know, dance that the three of us would be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, every day. Well, no, because I had a friend visit because for her mom's birthday, she got her a trip to New York. And I was like, oh, that's great. And she was like, what do you think we should do? And I was like, I don't know, Google stuff. I don't yeah, do anything. Wait, plant, yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> I have started I started working on a Google Doc, would be happy to share. And you guys should, oh my God, you guys yes. should honestly put some stuff on it because I've like, um, I have it broken down into a few sections now that I do have on there. Like if you've literally never been before, here are some of the basic things. So your stance now is like no exceptions going forward. Like I, I need this boundary for myself. I really, and this is the thing. I'm like, I need to have a, a text in my notes app or something that I can like send to someone who like is trying to visit or I don't know it's like bad behavior to look at my blood relatives and be like no because if you say no what you're damning them to is like at minimum $275 yeah. a night at a hotel and it's which, not good That's which is not, a nice not good but I really can't do it I'm too much of a brat I need my alone time I need my own space I don't want to feel responsible for you I don't want you breathing down my neck I don't want to spend a million dollars going out to restaurants three meals a day yeah, that's um, a one. are you honest like do you find yourself being honest with him just be like I don't have the bandwidth for this or do you come up with an excuse like in um, like, like going forward uh I don't know. Oh, and this is actually a story. Okay, this is probably a bad behavior story I could have even used. <laughs> is um is somewhat recently in the last like week and a half or something, um got that got that message, got that text about yeah. wanting to come into town yeah. and da da da. And I was like, I want to be out of town that weekend. I just lied. I just yeah. said I wasn't. No. I wasn't going to be there. Always have an excuse locked and loaded. But now, but now when that time comes, I'm gonna have to be like very mindful of like my Instagram story and like oh, you know what no, I mean you have to, you then do. you have to double down on the lies here's what you do <laughs> what? Yeah. you go into your story and go to your settings and oh, block, block them block the one person seeing. yep block the one person yeah. you can block someone from seeing your stories oh, yeah. you can hide your stories from like hide specific em. people oh did you not know that my god no oh my god game changer <laughs> it is a game changer alright yeah a question I have for you is your friends, you don't have to call anyone out, or your blood relatives that are staying somewhere else. Do you, when you go visit them, are you like, I will 100% be staying at your house? Or you're like, look, I'm setting this rule for myself, but New York City is a different story. Yeah, to like, me, and that's, like, what's kind of like your moving forward when you go to visit? Yeah, so um, that's, that's such a good question. Um, no, I, I, think, I think it comes down to a few things. One, how long are you going to be there? Two, what is your relation to this person? Three, <laughs> yes. what space they are working with. So when I think about like my sister, she just got married. She's in Atlanta. They have a guest bedroom. Yeah. She has a guest bedroom. Yeah. So I think it's just so different to be like, can I stay in your guest bedroom yeah. for two nights versus being like, can you and I share a bed in your studio apartment <laughs> in Manhattan yeah. and I'm going to yeah. be there for a week Yeah, and I want you to show me how to live like a local. Like I would never go to Atlanta and be like, I don't know, just te- te- you know, teach me how to be a local. Like it, it feels a little different. If I'm going somewhere on a vacation, I have friends who live there or whatever, I want to like meet up to see them but I try not to um I try not to be like my entire trip is that I'm going to see this one person in this one place and it's where they live and I'm intruding on like the day-to-day that they have I would much rather meet a friend in a separate city I agree and we go on a little vacation and what age what okay what age do you are we age out of this (laughs) No, no, no. I, but you know what I mean? Because it's so different if you're 22 and you all have no money and you just got out of college. That is the age where everybody is so happy to sleep on a floor. And I'm like, I'm 20 years old. And and, and I'm like, at, at what point am I like, grow up, get real, I like know. get a hotel? Like two years ago when I was like being corporate America, I was like, yeah, I'll get a hotel room. But now that I'm being businesswoman America, um, 
I feel I feel like age doesn't matter. See, I'm like the opposite because you know I have a I have a decent job, I make a decent living, but I'm still very cheap. So if I uh, can stay with someone, I'm like kind of in for it because I want to save some money. Because you know, New York's expensive. It's so it expensive. It's so hard because like people, so would, people would come stay, try to stay. <laughs> That's with why me. it's bad behavior. <laughs> I know, and I'd be like, can you please get a hotel? I think it does depend on the person and like yeah. where you're going because like yeah. and yeah. how long they're staying or split it up or just don't travel. And that, yeah, or stay home. Yeah, just stay home. And easy that, peasy. And that is like um, a little more inconvenient for the person traveling, of course, because now you have yeah. to like but that's bring fine. your suitcase a few other places. Yeah. But it's like, okay, well, I don't know. Like maybe, I'm like, yeah, maybe that's what you get. I feel like I'm coming kind of to a conclusion. Blair, where are you at? I will say, I think it is good behavior because... Are you familiar with Oprah Winfrey? Yeah. She's never heard of her. Okay. <laughs> she has a podcast, Super Soul Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I listen to it like passing Our competition. Our, yeah. competition. Our number one Direct competition. competition. Yeah. I mean, we're competing all the time. And it's like, Oprah, let us have a moment. Um, so I'm occasionally, well, it's on in the back. Well, I'm not really listening, but I'm, I feel like through osmosis, I'm getting something. Sure. And I feel like at one point, could be wrong, but I don't think I am because I'm saying it confidently. Mm -hmm. I think she said that boundaries are healthy. <gasps> And what are you doing? Boundary. Setting a boundary. You're setting a boundary. <laughs> You're protecting your super soul. That deserves wow, some snaps. Oh, wow, Blair. God, I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, end of show. I, I, think yeah. I, I think I agree. And I feel like, I feel like I know your soul. Thank you. And my super soul. I think I know your super soul. I think ultimately, this is like an active boundary that you will probably be doing, which I think is healthy and good. And at least for a little while until – also, you're saying this is, like, for now in my studio apartment. Like, yeah. I'm sure next year you'll have a five-bedroom, you know, course, to yourself. Yeah. Um, and once, also, I, once I sell my pilot. Yeah, once you sell that pilot. <laughs> it's also respect for your guests because you're like, I don't want you to be uncomfortable because yeah. you will be uncomfortable but in my apartment. I'm sure, I'm sure this is the fact of the matter. And maybe I don't. Maybe I'm not sure. But I believe – a friend is in town and they're stranded at JFK airport and they're like, Sarah, my last resort is your apartment. You're not gonna be like, I have a boundary. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I know that probably like yes. in a situation, like, and maybe I'm wrong. I think you're right. I think there's So then I'm going good on that. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys are on my team because that was my whole thing coming into this was I was like, I'm protecting my peace. Yep, you gotta protect and I'm, it. And this is actually better for them as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to some degree, this is actually better for them as well. Yeah, I agree. Because you could act out and actually hurt them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so when it was my sister, of course, everybody knows one, your family is like who can piss you off the most, like yeah. in a, such a specific way. But two, you can also like emote with them in ways you can't with your friends. So like I could just like say out loud to her, like, Emma, like I'm working, like, like buzz off. Like I can't <laughs> be doing this. You know what I mean? Like say something that like to a friend you'd have to be so much more like ginger about yeah. and mm -hmm. be like. It's so sweet of you to, like, offer that, like, we go to see a Stephen Colbert taping. But, like, that is actually going to go ahead and require us to be there at 3.30 p.m. <laughs> yep. I think we've deemed you officially good, good behavior. behavior. And um, for this, we have the ultimate prize. Which You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Okay. So we were trying to think, like, what's the best prize you can give someone? And ultimately, it is – a gorgeous compliment from your therapist. Yeah. And so we have a beautiful wow. jar that has compliments that we've written mm -hmm. in lieu of a therapist. Can I that, just tell you what? some of these? I would love for my therapist to just say it to me. I would me. die. Yeah. That validation. Like yeah. looking into my soul and just saying one of these compliments. And that's your gift today. That's your gift today. Okay. So I'm going to read one out. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Sarah Ross. Unlike everyone else I've seen, there's not a single thing wrong with you. Not one. Oh. <laughs> and that's your prize for today. That's your prize for today. Wait, that felt so good to hear. <laughs> I would love to get something like that from a therapist. Unfortunately, it is so clear by my actions, behaviors, words, and just the th the, the tears that are inevitably evoked every Perfect. session. Um, your weekly time to cry. That's what I got. Yeah. This is my hour. Honey. So I would love to hear that, of course. <laughs> well, thank you so much yeah, for coming on so the much. show. Oh, this has been amazing. Where, where I, can people stalk you? Oh yeah, my where gosh! Can they you? Um, I'm at Hot Sross on all my all my socials. Sarah Ross, Sross, get into this gig, Hot Sross. 
And that's our show. Thanks so much for listening today. We absolutely hate to do this. We hate it. But it would mean the world to us if you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you get podcasts, rate and review. Follow us at Bad Behavior NYC on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks again for listening. And remember, whatever your moral status, we are always here to judge. Bye. Bye. Do you think that was good? Welcome to Tire Discounters. Oh, hiya, Phantom. Hi, Mike. Hey, do you like to save big bucks? I like big bucks. I cannot lie. And the other brothers can't deny? What? You know I don't have any siblings. Well, let's just say that right now you can save big bucks on major brand tires. I like big bucks. And you cannot lie. Why would I lie, Mike? Never mind. Stop by Tire Discounters and save up to 300 big bucks on select major brands, plus a free alignment with any four-tire purchase. Tire I'm a sushi chef. I also happen to be a cat. How'd I get here? Adobe Photoshop. It turned a cute kitty like me into a sashimi master. And it can make your images look amazing too. In just a few clicks, you can replace a boring background, swap out a so-so sky, and remove distractions like people and power lines. With Photoshop, everyone can. I love playing with this mouse. Click or tap the banner to visit photoshop.com and pounce on your free trial today.